So now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you an advanced setup for how to get your vat to move based on the position beneath it. So if we're on hills or we're on like rocky terrain, then these pieces will adjust their start and end frames to accommodate it. This green block represents our destruction inside of Unreal. And this looks fine on a flat surface, but if we introduce a slope or a bumpy surface, we need these pieces to be offset based on the depth. A solution is to create a render target camera that's orthographic to account for distortion. And then that's going to give us a render target image that has UV coordinates and depth data that we can later use to drive these pieces. We can then go into Houdini and create a grid that's based on the render target camera's view. With that, we can then map out UV coordinate data and then alter that data back in UE using the depth data that we get from the render target camera's image. So the steps we need to take are we need to set up an orthographic render camera that gives us a render target image of depth in front of our character, which would be our knight. And then we need to create a grid in Houdini that represents the view of our render target camera. Then we need to save out the UV coordinates from zero to one as normalized horizontal distance and normalized vertical distance of the pieces inside the RG of a texture. And then save out the start and stop time into the B of a texture combined into a three vector, U, V, and time, the RGB of our texture. So how are we going to sample this texture? Vertex animation has a special UV channel. In Houdini, it's called UV2. And in Unreal, it's called texture coordinate one. Each vertex is mapped to the center of a pixel, and each point represents a piece. The vertical direction represents frames, and the data that we need is the starting position data, the U, V, and the T. We don't need the animation data, we just need the first frame. When we export out of Houdini, we're going to get a very long texture that looks like this, but the V, date, the v is going to be wrong, and we're going to have to change that. The U stays the same for the first frame texture, but not the V. The V will always be off by the frame number. So we'll have to multiply the V in this first frame texture by how many frames we have. So we're gonna take the texture coordinate one, which if you remember, that's the special UV channel inside Unreal. And we want the U to stay the same, but we need to take the V and we need to multiply it by the frame number of our animation. And that's gonna give us correct UVs in order to sample special data textures, which we're gonna get at Houdini. And these special data textures are going to be when these when the pieces start to move and when these pieces land. And then once that's done, we can use these to correctly sample the UE render target image, which we got out of our render target camera. Let's set up a render target camera. Let's go into our night, go to viewports, let's add, let's add a scene capture component. Let's parent that to our night, and then we're gonna drag that out, and we want that to be right above our ground, and we have this sphere to, that represents our spawn point, so we're gonna put it right there. And then we're gonna raise it up 200, and then we're gonna rotate it in 90 degrees so it's looking down. And now let's set the projection mode to be orthographic to account for distortion. We'll set the orthographic width to be a thousand. Scroll down and then under the capture source, you're gonna set that to be scene depth in R because that's all we're gonna need. Let's save that, let's go out. And then let's create a material and it's gonna be a render target. Let's call this depth. call it depth and now let's go back into our night and into the camera and then the texture target is going to be depth save that let's go back open depth and then under the sides let's set it to a thousand twenty four thousand twenty four and let's set the render target format to be rtf r 32 f Just like that, save that. Okay, save that, compile. And then inside the night, let's go to the event graph. And we, we don't want this to be working after the night begins his move. We want it to happen just a second and then be done. So under event graph, let's go here and type in deactivate. Then deactivate, capture scene component. Done, okay. So now let's go into our scene. Let's play once. And you can see that our it's being written to this texture. So that's what we want. So now let's set up our grid inside Houdini. So now that we're in Houdini, let's put down a solver node. Plug that in. 
and we just need the previous frame and input one and we need to create some default values so to do that we're going to put down a attribute create and we're going to make four attributes and the first attribute we're going to make is start frame And then the default's going to be 121. So after everything's finished, 21, and we're going to set this to be an integer. Second value we're going to create is going to be called stop frame. Set that to integer. And then we're going to set the default value to be negative 1, negative 1. And then we're going to set the next attribute to be called stop P for stop position. You're going to set that to be position. We're going to set the size to be three. We're going to set this to negative one, negative one, negative one, negative one, negative one. And then this attribute is going to be called start P for start position. Let's make that lowercase. Now let's go down and then the last bit we're going to set this to be again three and we're going to set this all to be negative one. And then let's set the type to be position and then put down a switch. We only need this on the first frame. So let's go here and let's set the input to be one at first frame oops, and zero at the second frame. And then we're gonna put down vex code so that it will reference the previous frame if it doesn't have any new attributes. And now let's put down some vex code. I'm just gonna copy and paste this in. I'll show you what I have and kind of explain it. So this is setting your stop frame, your stop position, and your start frame. And your start frame is determined by if your velocity and your pivot has reached a certain length, you've considered it started. And if your velocity and your length is low enough, then you're considered stopped. And the, it'll set that as your stopping frame. So now let's put down an output. Just like that. Let's go back out. Now let's put down a Time shift. Let's set this to 121. We'll probably cache this. And then after, let's put a extract all points. Now let's put down a attribute wrangle. And let's put down a grid. And if you remember, this is the grid that we talked about that's based off the render target cams uh, view. So let's set this grid to 20, 20, to 2. We're using this grid to set the U and the V of the color of these textures. And then we're using the start frame and stop frame that we set in the solver to set the blue channel. So we have RGB with the U and the V being set by this grid, and then the normalized stop and the normalized start being set by, we're getting the information from this solver and we're baking that into the blue channel of these particles. So now let's put down an attribute copy. Plug that in. And we wanna put this all into our output of our sim so let's go up here drag that in and we want don't want to match the p attribute and we want the attribute class to be points and if you remember we baked information into cd2 so we definitely want that cd2 here and now let's put a null actually first let's put a cache file cache this 
bat C. Bat underscore C underscore dollar sign F. Let's cash this out. Now let's go here. We'll call this bat out. And let's drag that into our vertex animation textures output. And then we're going to go into settings and we're going to set export spare color texture because we're going to need that. And then let's go to advanced and we want to crop textures to first frame only because we want that first frame information data. So let's export that and we'll bring that back into Unreal. If you imported your textures correctly, they should look like this. Be sure to click on them, right click and side effects fat HDR textures. And let's open up that DStorm material and let's get started on working on this. So the first thing we need is we need texture coordinate or UV2 in Houdini. Remember it's texture coordinate one. And then we're going to put down a component mask. And we need just the red channel. And then below we need just the green channel. The U and the V. Green channel. Okay. Drag that in here. And we need to multiply that by the frame number to compensate for this. Set this to 120. Put down an append. Then let's put down a texture sample. We can actually just drag our textures that we have in here. We need these two. Boom, boom. And these represent our the frames that these start moving and stop moving. This one's the start, this one's the stop. And then we need to drag this into the UVs. Let's drag these back so we give a little bit more room. And now we need to append the R and the G on both of these because this is the uh, the U and the V of the texture coordinates of where these pieces start moving and where these pieces stop moving. And then the B is uh, time. So we, and the B is time. So we need to append the R and the G. Just like this. And then this needs to go into a texture sample, but we need a texture object. So texture object, we're going to get our depth that we made. And then we're going to use this depth information from the texture, from the camera to offset these based on, and then lerping between them and then lerp between them. So now let's put down a texture sample, drag that in here. Boom, boom. Drag those appends into the UVs. Set up a LARP. We want it to be between the start and the stop. Then let's set up the time. So let's go Put up a subtract. We want this to be the <clears throat> in time minus the start time. Let's do in time minus the start time. And what we want to do is take the animation progress this frame. And we just want to subtract that by the start time so that we can have this starting at the correct time. And then we want to take that and we want to divide. We want to have that be divided by the end time. Like so. Let's put that into a saturate, which is going to work like a clamp. So we're not having any weird alpha values. Okay, and now we want to set this up so 
we aren't we need to compensate for the camera so let's put down a subtract and if you remember our camera was up by 200 so 200 minus this let's plug this into a multiply and the only reason i'm putting down this multiply is because i took my vat and i set it to 0.5 so we need to compensate for that and then we need this to be a three vector for this to work because we're only working with the z so let's put down an append and then put down a two vector plug that into here and then that into here for the position offset and now we need to set it up so these pieces are only appearing when their start when their start frame has started so let's put down an if and we want to say if the animation progress of this frame is above its start time, which again, remember these are set from values from zero to one, then we're going to set it to be visible. And we're going to do that by saying if A is greater than B, set it to be visible, so a value of one. We're going to plug this into the p scale multiplier. So we'll be taking the scale to be visible basically. But if it's not, then we're gonna set it to zero. Come on. So if the animation progress this frame has is bigger than the start frame, then you'll be visible. Plug that into local space scale multiplier. Apply this. And let's test it out. Let's go back in here. Let's put down a cube. Scale it up a bit. Maybe rotate it. All right, let's check this out. And it works. We can see this piece started down here, and then this is its end position, and it's lurping between its start position and its end position, and this um, this data is being offset by what we're getting from this render target. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and thank you for watching.